it's not really either one, it's really Escher that is drawing them both. Mm -hmm. Similarly, subject and object seem to arise from tangled hierarchical quantum measurement in the brain, but it's really not the brain that is causing it. Just as left hand and right hand in the picture is not really causing the picture. Which, which, what is causing the picture is MC Escher, which is outside of the picture, transcends the picture. The same thing, consciousness is ultimate creator of the downward causation, creator of the illusory separateness of subject and object. Although from inside it seems like subject is creating the object and the object is creating the subject. But ultimately it's neither. It's really consciousness. This subject-object split is an illusory manifestation. It seems that way. Then why, why do I feel separate from you? That's precisely the point. So I'm an object in your consciousness. You're identifying with your brain, which is also an object in your consciousness, but you're identifying with it. That's what tangled hierarchy does. Now it's making sense to you, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. That's what everyone, every one of us have that I-ness. This brain is special because this is the subject of my experience. And I'm looking at you. You are an object in my consciousness, in my awareness. You are separate from me. You are secondary also because I, the vehicle of this brain that I identify with, is seeing you as an object in my consciousness. So you are secondary to me. All this is the result of this tangled hierarchy and this conditioning of that identity. So ultimately, if I am able to let go of the subject object and just I accept the concept that we are all one, then that would alleviate the separateness? Uh, yes, accept is the first step. But <laughs> remember, it still has to come to you that in separate notion has to come to you directly. Mm -hmm. The observer is the observed. This is a quotation from the mystic Jiddu Krishnamurti. Observer is the observed, but it's not just a conceptual reckoning of that. If you just conceptually reckon it, then it's good. It's a good starting point. But then meditate on it and meditate on it, and then that subject-object split will disappear and that's what we call in East Indian jargon is samadhi, or Zen Buddhist jargon is, is satori, or in Christian jargon, an encounter with the Holy Spirit, because in the Holy Spirit there is no subject-object split. So then you really have to make a distinction then between philosophy or knowledge or concept and experience. Philosophy and knowledge or concept are all secondary to this experience of wisdom. In this wisdom, there is no separateness. The separateness shrinks to the recognition that observer is the observed. Whereas the split comes in the identification with part of the object spectrum, namely my brain. So when we recognize directly, by direct experience, that we are capable of bridging that separateness, then I know that there really isn't any separateness ultimately. I am one, for the sake of experience, have become two or many, but it's only an illusory separateness. I am still one, because this separateness is just an imposition on my oneness, just as we make chalk marks on a blackboard. The board remains unity, however many chalk marks I have made. So consciousness remained that one always, except that many experiences, many manifest experiences are being created in this consciousness, which then become the source of our apparent separateness and confusion. So the, the reason that I'm looking and seeking these answers, or what why is this, is this important to me because it, it helps me to stop feeling so separate and sad and alone? Or does it tell me that, oh, I can create, finally I can create money in my hand, I don't have to worry about all working, or what does it kind of mean to me, all of this stuff that we just... So step by step, the first thing that it, as soon as you hear this, you know, um, 
70s are a good example when Fred Allen Wolf actually first coined this phrase, I create my own reality. So uh, what did the New Agers did, do? Well, the New Agers, um, I'm just using this word, phrase New Ager, not pejoratively, please, but as a description of the people who were influenced by the physics that was getting done at that time. And the physics was very elementary. We are imposing some new phrases on a still predominantly materialistic belief system. The belief system was that everything is made of matter and therefore material investigations and material pursuits are very important. So what did we do? We came on that, we superimposed on that this new dictum, quantum physics dictum. Dictum is correct. I create my own reality. And the first thing that people started creating are Cadillacs, right? There was a whole tradition that, um, that got created in one spiritual tradition comes to mind, I don't mention name, but uh, they actually um, meditated that way, meditated to manifest material wealth. I'll manifest a Cadillac for myself. Very soon, however, it was recognized that Cadillac is a little bit hard. So some traditions, some uh, very famous uh, teaching traditions, which again, I won't mention names, they started uh, giving the idea that we can at least create parking spaces. Remember that? That's, that's in the 70s. So we did that. But after a while, it became clear, uh, thanks to uh, Ludwig Buss uh, in Australia, myself at Oregon, and uh, Casey Blood at uh, Rutgers, uh, it became clear that the place from where we choose to create my own reality, that place of consciousness is a very special non-ordinary state of being where the subject-object split tend to disappear. The samadhi or satori that I was telling you about. And it is from this non-ordinary state that I choose. And therefore, the ordinary, ordinary uh, exaltation of the new ager also disappeared until it was forced to face the reality that there is really no free lunch. We have to meditate and reach this non-ordinary states of consciousness before we become the creator of our own reality. That took a while, but now I think finally people are recognizing that there is no shortcut, but the cut is not that long either. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. We have been engaging in creativity for a very long time. We have created a great amount of art, music, even science, great amount of it. So there are many people who are experienced with creative process that eventually leads to this discontinuous leap towards this non-ordinary state of consciousness. As this is being clear, we are getting a new wave of a new generation of enthusiastic investigators who are ready to take this leap. And then it means a whole lot to me because I become different in the process. I become empowered in the process. I become a lover of creativity in the process. I become transformed in the process. I'm capable of experiencing reality at a much more subtle level, in a much more loving